Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. Bottom left hand corner, we got Gypsy starting as the Red Terran. Bottom right hand corner, we got Crossy starting as the Blue Zerg. This is going to be on Apocalypse, a three player map. And Crossy once again going to get the Overlord out to his opponent's location first. Uh, last game, if you did not catch it, Gypsy just with some incredible micromanagement. I really like seeing it actually. So Cross was able to get what I would say was a, a pretty sturdy advantage. In the mid game, he was up gas. He had defilers. He had, uh, in plenty of time, he had lurkers out in the field. Uh, an initial Valkyrie gambit did not really pay out for Gypsy, but Gypsy's poise, I really feel like that's what it is. Like, also, considering game one, I feel like the lesson that where I've seen the largest improvement of play for Gypsy between the previous uh, New York land and this seattle starcon land is poise gypsy's poise vastly increased between these two tournaments <clears throat> with you often like previously when you see a uh a quick loss like that oftentimes uh Gy previously gypsy would spiral a little bit and get a little bit frustrated and not play to his full potential in following matches and that's uh, how jayun honestly ended up taking the championship at the previous starcon here Gypsy with just a solid recovery all the way around. And also putting that barracks at the bottom. So ignore me what I'm saying. I guess this is just kind of the standard things. Depot, depot, barracks to the south. But I still feel like it's uh, it's good to have it away from... Anyway, I'm not a Terran player, so... Just ignore most of what I say. <laughs> anyway, um, where was I with this? But I really love Gypsy's macro. And on top of that, just... Uh, not just getting that strong economy, but just having the skill to utilize that and just apply constant, constant pressure to Crossy to completely negate the four gas that Crossy was able to, to, to procure and utilize. It honestly looked like a situation... It, it looked like he was still on three gas most of that time, and I think part of it was just the onslaught. Gypsy just unrelenting. Able to get first scout with that SCV, by the way, confirm the hatchery, and should be able to confirm the gas timing along this. I think this was around... <laughs> I'm trying to make guesses. I should go back in the replay to check. I believe it is 24 seconds, so in a second. So 24, so that was a 207 gas. Uh, two Zerglings making the way out. Another two Zerglings are queued up. So it, it, regardless, it's going to be, uh, looks like another two-hatch Mutalisk opener. Crossy's Mutalisk micro, by the way, absolutely fantastic, as you saw in the previous match. Uh, Marine, two Marines, actually, into Command Center here to start. The Zergling's going to go ahead and chase down. And this is kind of a nice little off-tempo thing. Gypsy fielding his Marines a little bit further forward. I wonder if he's going to try to bait the Zerglings out to the front. The Overlord is already, it's in position to see the Marines as they make their way across. But it's they're not in position to know what's going on with the Marines out in the field. And with the three bunch, actually, and a decent amount of micro, I like this, actually. Might be able to wipe them out and cause a little bit more havoc. So the Zerglings trying to run up. Beautiful micro. So walking, well, walking one and gets two. So loses one Marine for three Zerglings and has a fourth Marine alongside. And that's charging towards that natural expansion. Yeah, that's forcing some additional Zerglings out, which early game larva like this, absolutely great to hurt the Zerg economy. And so threatening towards the front, making his way back, and should be able to get back to the cover in the, the joint location of the rest of his buddies without too much trouble. So forcing, by necessitation, forcing some additional Zerglings out in the field. And also putting Crossy in a little bit of a uh, worrisome situation. Actually, I would have loved to see uh, Gypsy pocket them down here potentially and avoid the overlord scout to the north another SCV making its way out in the field by the way in the meantime gas is up we got a additional barracks after the academy this time so we are seeing so we're seeing rax academy uh <coughs> excuse me rax academy barracks and i'm wondering if this is going to be rax academy barracks to get a faster plus uh, a faster stim and range up to deal with the mutalisk play Zergling speed also way, uh, also by the way being tacked up so there's stim on the way uh mutalisk spire about one third finish the zerglings trying to hunt that scv able to get that scv kill but in the meantime a good pile of marines some medics also queuing up in the space of this but gypsy i don't know is this gonna be oh yeah in base third hatch by the way for crossy this time so look for and there's uh, also range queued up 
So this time, uh, and also I should note that the engineering bay is also in the way and we're not seeing like anything crazy like three barracks before whatever. Compsat station also being constructed because of the lack of scouting wants to try to confirm the tech and also the timing and also how many mutilisks. Where did Gypsy drop it? Drop the natural expansion to get a look at the, the, the creep colony right there. He's going, so he's moving out with, uh, okay, there's the second medic. This is a little bit of a later press out. But he is going to have a much earlier range. And the Zerling's able to go for a run by, at least going to get a Marine kill right there. Gypsy getting caught with his pants down briefly. And Crossy, as a result, able to move in. Nice response to, to at least get that SCV out of, or get the Marine out of the way and get that third barracks up. So I think this is going to be, we'll see if this, I think this is going to turn into four barracks. Plus one weapons queued up, seven Mutalists on the way. And Crossy doing a pretty good job of keeping Gypsy back and creating some scatter. I'm wondering if you, I actually am wondering if you just want to run out. Not, uh, there's a nice plug actually there from Gypsy as well. I was wondering if he's going to try to run the Zergling back out, but Gypsy making sure he wasn't able to do that and plugging the gap in between. So with the uh, 2.5, the in base hatchery, the goal is usually to try to hunt down this medic marine army out on the field, produce a glut of Zer use the extra larva to produce some additional Zerglings alongside, find a good engagement point find that army and get a kill. I don't like what Crossy's doing here, actually exposing his mutilus a little bit early. Um, I think it's a better idea with the 2.5 in particular to actually just continually build, uh, Overlord taking some damage in that back corner, to continually build the mutilus force up until you're at, I think I, I think eight's usually more like, I, I think, yeah, eight's I think a good count and then, fill, no, never mind, he's gonna go straight to nine and he's gonna skip the Zerglings in between, which actually surprises me a little bit with the in base able to sneak around though stop that turret now these barracks are very much exposed to so gypsy has to respond to the threat pushing his way back in able to pick off one mutilisk now two mutilisks and crossy gonna back up but i was expecting uh so comsat now at the natural expansion colony still not uh, gypsy really wanted to see if there's just a slew of creep colonies on the front so this was this going to turn into crazy zerg was the question we don't see a hydral stand out but at the same time we don't see a third we got the third just getting dropped right now which feels a little bit late uh for crossy we have eight mutilists trying to abuse that corner high ground these two mutilists gonna get caught in transition one of them getting wiped out they're able to wipe out that turret over that barracks line now and gypsy this time a little bit too far out so he's gonna go ahead and go for the counterattack to draw the mutilisks away from his main just with the threat on the front which is usually why you'll see a bunch of sunken colonies to to not worry about this situation so you can just go to work with the mutilisks on the front field but anyway the mutilisks drawing their way back waiting for so plus one weapons about to queue in for both players some additional mules getting wiped out so this is four medics a pretty bulky attack force but a little bit stranded and honestly it's kind of micro versus micro and it's wide open field which i'm going to give the advantage to crossy the medic's getting a little bit separated right there but a pretty nice he's got the nice line to go ahead and approach the mules backing off momentarily another group of mules wow this is a heavy investment of mules this is going to turn into a, a hive guardian play here from crossy another mules getting wiped out right there uh, with the numbers i'm i'm we'll, we'll look for it we do have a queen's nest getting dropped another mules getting caught on an off position, so Gypsy making the best, but honestly not the best situation here. So three racks, we do have the starports here in the background. Armory once again to go for Mutalus. And that, that medic marine force got absolutely ransacked in the space of this. Looks like he was able to take down two Mutalisks, maybe three in the space of it. And we again see Valkyries getting queued up rather than uh, the science vessels in between. It looks like there was a transition back Queen's Nest exposed to the front. Looks like there was a trans uh, transition back to a Hydralist den to get some additional lurkers out in the field. I also, this might be of a decision from Crossy to go for heavy mutilus skin in the mid game because there it is a large map with a lot of opportunities for mutilus to get some damage, but it's also a rampless map, which makes it a little bit harder for lurkers to have as much efficacy out there. One supply depot down, second supply depot not taken out. Crossy with a very healthy economy. Supply count just about even. The Mutalists backing up away from the Corsairs. A few Hydralists being... I, I'm wondering if a few Hydralists will be left to help deal with the Valkyries on the ground or if it's going to be a Scourge. Yeah, we do have some Scourge queued up in the space of this. Single Creek Colony top right. Gypsy finally out on the field. But this feels... And this is off three racks. I'm concerned with this. Let's see if he's able to get it done. 
I, I'm not sure that he's got a bit. This is, looks like a very small army. Nice little bit of dodging there. Able to get a lot of missile shot. A turnaround shot on the Valkyries, but man, a lot of those missiles hit. Leaving several of the mutilists very, very vulnerable. Second Creek Colony not yet built. So Gypsy actually might have opened himself up a window with that. If he die, if he's going to press top right. The mutilists sweeping around. Looking for an opportunity. We've got all sorts of lurkers morphing behind this, and it looks like Gypsy going to back off for right this second. A couple more marine stragglers trying to, to join up, but Crossy looks like he has secured three gas. Uh, he's already at Hive. The, the, oh, look at the... the I, this has to be a mistake. Second Hydral Sten instead of a... This is actually going to lose the game here for Crossy. That's a second Hydral Sten. I think that was intended to be a Defiler Mount. And that... Uh, and double evolution chamber i can't imagine that this was an intentional play right here Th I, this was intended to be a defiler mount and i think it was just a, a misclick or, or something along those lines uh that's rough so now that's yeah now dropping the defiler mount also able to micro forward and just wipe out the medic marines here on the front supply is still dangerously even which puts actually crossy at advantage so despite having the later defiler mount Still puts him in a pretty good situation, but running headlong into that army loses a slew of mutilists yet again. Man, just kind of botches. Uh, it feels like the, the the scale keeps moving wildly back and forth in this match <coughs> based on little movements here and there. It's uh, kind of nuts. Marine blockading what could have been a fourth and also uh, moving out. Overlord picked off midfield. We do have the initial science vessels out in the field. We're up to five barracks. In the space of this, this is just going to be straight science vessels from here. So let's see if Gypsy stays on top of it and gets that supply depot uh, built. We have a couple defensive scourge, but I don't see any. So lurkers are, not, and this is where having the defilers out would have been a big help. No defiler here as of yet. Consume still a ways off, and I don't see any lurkers. Okay, sorry, the lurkers are hidden. We got three lurkers there hidden underneath. And that could have been two irradiates and end game potentially. How many lurkers? We got four lurkers up here. At least we got an irradiate dropped somewhere out in the field. But in the meantime, we got mutilists going for a counterattack. That's oh bad timing. So that supply depot did burn to the front. Six o'clock base getting grabbed from Gypsy. I think Crossy noting previous match. Now moving the mutilists in to maybe create some havoc. Lurker getting picked out. I, th is, I think that drone actually might be sitting on top of those lurkers intentionally to try to make it a little bit harder to irradiate those lurkers underneath. But I think Gypsy's still managing to get the irradiate off in the space of that. That factory also taking some damage midfield. A drone hiding top left. That Marine should find it to deny that. And looking for oh no no radiates dropped on the mutilus i've actually seen a lot of terran do this rather than trying to radiate first of all zerg have gotten a lot better about keeping the mutilisks unpacked afterwards but also i've seen a lot of terran just not bother irradiating the mutilus feeling like okay well now this is at the stage where i don't have to worry about them as much let's save the irradiates for the lurkers and the defilers a little bit of a so six o'clock base is up gypsy you're going to go ahead and defense matrix the two fire bats once again. So this is going to be a similar maneuver to game one. And look at those lurkers get obliterated. Yeah, just leaves them so weak. And the Nidus Canal is not up for Crossy. So that is very likely going to be a dead base. An additional defense matrix to provide some support in the space of this. A lurker morphing last second. We do have another Sutton Colony in the space, but that Nidus Canal is gone. All sorts of... Hydralis trying to dash up to provide some timing for this. Mutalus is diving on top of this, but this is, yeah, radiation bait. Ooh, nice irradiate getting the middle Hydralisks in space. Crossy somehow defending this, though. Unbelievable. But we have uh, the Science Vessel fleet going to escape. I can't believe he defended that. And he did not lose a lot of... So he's still got a very healthy worker count. So lost, it looks like, just defensive buildings in the midst. Holy cow, what a defense. Talk about last second and sliver right there. In the meantime, six racks up. Got some battle cruisers about to take the field. Uh, decent science puzzle count. This is three base uh, versus three, which usually puts Terran in a strong situation. The Marine still has not been evicted 
in the mid ground. The mule, the last of the mule is getting cleared out right there. And Crossy with the defilers that again, I think the, the issue was just that double accidental double, uh, double little bit of accidental double hydralisk den. I don't know why that was so hard to spit out. Uh, hurting Crossy a little bit, but Crossy with in 20 supply in a pretty good situation. And I think he's transitioned into, it looks like he's gonna go for Hydra Plague here. So initial Dark Swarm gonna turn around, is able to pick off a Science Vessel right there. Also getting that uh, that energy upgrade to really make this fly. I lost a single Hydralisk. Hydralisk is gonna sit there under the Dark Swarm for the time being. I'm gonna rejoin their brethren. So it's gonna be micro, it's gonna be, uh, mi micro's not the right word here. It is going to be armor, uh, army positioning versus army positioning. There's the plague dropped in the space of this. It might even be a bonus plague in the midst of this. This is where Hydralis do so well. Hydralis do very, very well against plague marines. Plus one weapons, by the way, already upgraded. Still, this marine's still sitting there. Looks like top left is really denied a lot of drones. So Crossy, not yet able to procure a fourth gas. Science vessel count still pretty high. Medic marines grouping mid map. What's the upgrades? Plus two weapons, by the way, in the space of this. We do have plus one carapace underneath. The filer getting caught right there, mid map. But I think there should be, usually when you play this, you have like another defiler nearby. Needs to be a little bit careful about that because you can't run this army because uh, Hydra, is just pure Hydra, gets chewed up by Medic Marine with uh, equivalent upgrades without that defiler support. Defiler making its way back in. Nice irradiate in the middle of those Hydralisks. Try to force the spread out and damaging all of the, all of the friends. A little bit of late attack and attacking the wrong Hydralisk right there. Another nice irradiate. Gypsy really making this frustrating for Crossy and softening these Hydralisks up as well. So you're gonna have to stay on top of it. A fourth base potentially claimed main is about my mind out. The Hydralisk pressing in but without the Lurker, once again, now the Dark Swarm dropped. And it looks like, okay, so Crossy able to clear out, and he's going to go ahead and drop this hatchery between this. I'm wondering if he just wants to stage these Hydralisks back on the cliffside edges and try to use Superior Visioning. He needs to draw that Defiler back. Good plague in the space of this. And he's going to try to use the Superior Positioning along kind of this cliffside edge, but ignore that because you can skip a lot of that if you get a drop bottom right. Although very quickly cleaned up and he's going to use this to go ahead and procure four gas and make his way towards higher tier tech from there. I kind of like that play actually. So the strategy is, is, yeah, just hold the high ground with Hydra Defiler along this cliffside edge. Get your fourth gas, get your macro up and just punish from there. Try to get the plagues where you can. In the meantime, Gypsy has not yet dropped an additional base. A single Hydra is going to go ahead and scoot across. He's going to get cleared up. At least he's the dropship going to the north here. And interesting, so Crossy uh, going across what I would consider, the, you, uh, if you're going to hold this, is kind of like the line, this ridgeway. Okay, he's going to back up across that ridgeway. Gypsy, in the meantime, has transitioned. So he recognized the tech switch, has transitioned into mech, which helps support this. We do have a dropship waiting at the 12 o'clock location. Several lurkers underneath it. Goodbye. Testing the field out. And at the very least, I can get some scouting information. And sees that the fourth gas is not yet up. Which is important. But, ooh, a couple science vessels getting picked off in the space of that distraction. And this 9 o'clock base, so Gypsy Distance Mining has not yet grabbed the 9. Once this fourth gas is capped... Crossy actually in, in a pretty good spot. So within 20 supply, it, again, it's going to come down to the, the troop positioning from here. Distance finding at the 9 o'clock. Gypsy does need to claim that sooner rather than later. Firebats also taking the field to provide some support. Not much of a uh, plague right there. With the siege tanks out in the field, every once in a while you'll see a handful of Zerglings mixed in, especially when you have that adrenal upgrade and that speed. Uh... If you can get a nice Dark Swarm lineup, they can go ahead and shoot through those Siege Tanks, and then if you get the Plague on top of it, ooh, a lot of Science Buses wiped out. Well worth the three Hydralisks. But Gypsy also starting to take field mid-map. A Defiler was able to sneak into the 9 o'clock. Beautiful Plague on its dying breath. But another massive drop. Keep missing these drops. 
bottom right. And oh, this one looks like it's going to be painful. Working on the evolution chambers, which would be a big hit. The defiler mounds right here. And man, this is free marines. Zerglings spawning, but it looks like they're misrallied. So they're not rallying towards the attack of opportunity. And lucky here for Crossy, the Gypsy must have been distracted otherwise, because there was no focus fire on a lot of these critical buildings. Ultralist Cavern, by the way, building bottom right. Also, uh, mined out right here. So, three base versus two right this second. Natural, well, soon to be one. As Gypsy about to mine out, he's got the nine o'clock up somehow. Did he float that? He's just burning already. Six o'clock location. Still has a decent amount of resources. So yeah, this is this is turning into a really interesting one. Which I want to chalk up to Apocalypse being kind of a challenging map like this. Gypsy able to push up yet another drop in the main. And again, Crossy missing it. Now those evolution chambers and all this tech gonna drop. And I think that's gonna be the, sh the massive shift in Gypsy's favor. Although you need to hit that second Hydralis then. Um, and this is now unfortunate for Crossy. He was honestly, looks like he was able to drop a hatchery top left. He was in a really good position, but losing all of this tech and honestly not having enough uh, yeah, it doesn't, uh, this is the problem with Hydralis, again, just heads up versus the Medic Marine Forces. They, they don't perform super well. He's still going to have the Hydralis, but now missing that at Filer Mound. And this is basically a open window for Gypsy to just start moving across the map while those units can't be fielded as rapidly as possible. He's going to go ahead and shut down that top left. And that was a base that Crossy absolutely needed. He's going to go ahead and grab this bottom right hand base in the space of this 9 o'clock. Not nine o'clock. Nine, nine o'clock is up and running. But Gypsy able to shut down. And really, he's uh, Crossy's mains mined out. His natural expansion is about to be mined out. So he's at two bases. This is going to be two bases versus three. And more dropships loaded up and dropping all over the main. They're, so it looks like that the plate is going to finish but the ultras cavern also going to go down as an ultras pops out the hydral is going to go down and what can crossy even build okay he's got a spotting pool and that's about it <laughs> yeah crossy just trying to absorb attacks uh i don't think he, yeah he's not got much of an army gypsy's at double the supply right this second wiped out the hive as well and that is game with that hive gone it would take forever for gypsy to get back in this. He's probably still going to fight it out because of the tournament situation here. But Gypsy has done it with just, again, some smothering drops and Crossy not responding. It looks like he's trying to defend bottom right. It's not going to last long, though, and massive siege tanks making their way up. With one thing... Dark Swarm's helpful, uh, but Irradiate and Siege Tanks without anything underneath. And on, again, the Defiler Mound's not up. Did another Defiler Mound get dropped someplace? I don't think it... Okay, never mind. Defiler Mound, Ultra's Cavern got dropped top right. But regardless... Ugh. Things not looking good for Cross. A little... Hey, the offsets... That's kind of interesting. Uh, Ultralisks with the offset, I think they're one of the few units. That, occasionally you'll see Zerglings get splashed by this, but... Siege tanks do get the splash damage underneath uh, Dark Swarm, by the way. Burrow, that was an uh, unusual burrow right that second. Comsat going to go ahead and clear out what's left. And there's GG. Cross recognizing he wasn't going to be able to hold bottom right. And Gypsy had the rest of the map. Great play from Gypsy to clear the... And it was nail biters, but really it felt like that massive drop bottom right. Wiping out all of that tech. And then the... the critical push top left to deny that base really closed it out for gypsy hope you guys enjoyed it thank you for listening late night brain fog commentary is the med kicking in i feel like the starcraft audio got real quiet for me for some reason in the space of that all right let's switch to vampire survivor anybody who doesn't want to watch starcraft you can go someplace else